Hey guys, I'm Sam and I might have a slightly unhealthy obsession with foundations and concealers. Base coverage products give me the kind of control I wish I had over my acne and hyperpigmentation growing up. Stay tuned because today we're going to do an in-depth breakdown of all of my foundations. A lot of you guys must be here to find out if any of my skin tone matches match you. So here are some signs that they might. Number one, you have a medium skin tone. You've never been able to tell if you're fair skinned or dark skinned. Number two, you have an olive undertone, which means that you have a yellow dominant undertone, but it's not a warm yellow, it's a cool yellow. I've broken down undertones in this video over here. So you can use that guide if you want to figure out what your undertone is. And in terms of skin type, I have sensitive, acne prone, normal to dry skin that's very prone to hyperpigmentation. So keep that in mind when I'm talking about the finish and coverage of the foundations. Alright, let's get into it. Like many of us, the Maybelline Fit Me foundation was my first ever foundation. Mine's kind of expired but I thought I would share this as a shade reference because a lot of you can probably go to a nearby store and swatch Maybelline foundations on your skin. The closest thing to my skin tone is the shade 228. 332 is a better undertone match but it's a little dark for me. When applied to moisturized skin, it gives you a demi matte finish. On dry skin, it clings to your dry patches so don't do that. It can give you medium coverage with one layer and kind of high coverage with the second layer but I wouldn't suggest putting more on than that. It's gonna look cakey. It is a self-setting foundation and it transfers minimally when you don't set it with a powder but you could do that if you wanted. These are swatches taken about one hour apart and as you can see this foundation doesn't really oxidize really fast but over time it does get darker. This next one is a little less popular. My second foundation I ever tried was the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation and this shade match is very similar to Maybelline Fit Me in 332. It does look a little bit dark on me when I've been using my sunscreen. I like the packaging, it looks luxe and dense. Um, it gives you like pretty high coverage on a first application. It does feel a little bit heavy on your skin though. On application, this has an amazing undertone, it's a perfect match but as soon as it oxidizes, it looks a little dark and orange on me. If you have dry skin and you don't want to use the Maybelline Fit Me uh, in 332, then you should try the Flower Beauty in the shade Tawny, it'll match you. It transfers a lot, it's not like a modern dewy finish that sets and then becomes kind of like a layer of glue. It stays oily and you need to set it with a lot of powder. As you can see here, it oxidizes almost instantaneously, so it is a bit dark on me. If you're in the shade 332 in Maybelline but you're looking for something dewy, this would be perfect for you. If you haven't tried this next one, you definitely should. This is my sweet baby favorite foundation ever. I get compliments on my skin when I wear this foundation and that is very rare. People don't usually look at your skin and say, wow, did you put something on your skin? Your skin looks nice. So the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop foundation is a winner. It also does not have denatured alcohol in it like the Maybelline Fit Me. I'm in the shade beige which does oxidize to a little bit more orange than I would prefer. So when I'm a little more tan, it looks good on me. Um, the formula is very mattifying and pore minimizing. As you can see, one small amount gives you so much coverage. You really don't need a lot. And here's what it looks like up close. Um, when you put a second layer on, it does look a little bit heavy. But give it a little time and it'll melt into your skin. And you can also use a setting spray on it. And it transfers like almost zero. Like point. 1% of it transfers onto a tissue. You don't need to set it and it'll last on your skin for like multiple hours, at least 7-8 hours. So I'd say this is the same shade as the Flower Beauty but just one shade lighter so when it oxidizes it matches me perfectly. This next foundation I've had mixed feelings about. I was never wowed by it but I keep reaching for it and it's almost finished. Say hello to my ratchet looking sugar stick foundation. I bought it a long time ago. I know it's ugly. What can I say? I'm in the shade 25 Macchiato and I know I can also get away with the shade 20 Galau and 40 Brev. And that's something I like about the sugar shade range actually. They have a lot of yellow dominant shades. And it's also an exact match for my neck and jaw area. So I think it's the best foundation match I've found so far. It has a stick product on one side and the brush on the other side and the brush is useless, I never use it. 
As you can see, one layer gives you a very high coverage, but if you wanted, you could like really paint it on and it would not oxidize or give you like a weird unnatural finish. If you were dressing up for a function or something, I've seen a lot of makeup artists actually use this foundation and for good reason. You can trust the color to stay the way it is. One caveat, if you have facial hair or dry patches, it's not going to react well with those. Make sure you're exfoliated. Because it's so high coverage, you really don't need a lot. And controversial opinion, I think sugar should just get rid of the brush and lower the price. It is not very transfer proof, you can easily wipe it off, but if you set it with a good powder, it will last you about 3-4 to four hours. I never really thought a cream foundation would suit my skin and be one of my favorites, but the fact that it doesn't oxidize and it stays the same color like you can see here is a huge selling point for me. Yet another one I have mixed feelings about and our last foundation for the day. The K-Beauty Hydrating Foundation. I am guilty of trying this one in the store, knowing that it didn't fit me and still coming back home and working myself into a delusion that somehow I would make it work and ordering it and it's so expensive. Anyway, so I'm in the shade 155 Y Tan. It's the only olive-ish toned shade in the entire range. And I think that K-Beauty did a great job with the diversity of the colors, but they fell short when it came to range of undertone. And that's a shame because it has a beautiful formula. It spreads like a gel moisturizer and it gives you like a medium coverage when you tap it in with your fingers. Uh, pro tip, don't use a brush, you will get streaks. And you can use a sponge for like lighter coverage. I really love the dewy finish that it gives me. I have to mix it with a green corrector because it is a little bit dark and pink for me but I can make it work. It does not oxidize at all and if you don't set it with a powder, it does transfer a little bit. These swatches aren't doing this justice because the swatches were kind of on a gradient colored part of my arm but it actually doesn't oxidize at all so if you can find a perfect skin match, this is quite a good holy grail. Let's talk about the side by side swatches. So all these swatches were taken in natural light because I wanted to make sure you guys could see how the colors and the pigments reacted with a light source that has the entire Vibgar spectrum within it. And like you can see, I have an extremely olive undertone and it's really reflected in the fact that K-Beauty and Maybelline, which are generally considered quite yellow dominant foundations, they look almost peachy or pink on my skin. And they work pretty well as color correctors actually for me. So I do use these often under my eyes. Well, not the Maybelline one, that's expired, but the K-Beauty one. Mm -hmm. So for anybody who finds that foundations that look really, really yellow in the bottle, but when they apply it on their skin, they look slightly ashy or pink, it's a clear indicator that you have an olive skin tone and that you're gonna have to go online and look for like severely yellow toned um, foundations. I think the beauty industry has very recently caught up to the awareness that olive undertones actually exist. For a long time I felt a little bit gaslit about what my skin tone was. I just felt like I'm just not made for makeup because undertones were not inclusive enough. I've also noticed that most Indian retailers like Nykaa or Hawk Makeup actually don't import all of the shades in the range and many of the olive shades get left in other countries which is such a shame because I have a feeling that a lot of the Indian demographic actually has um, very olive dominant undertones. So here's hoping that brands get a little bit wiser to undertone inclusivity and start releasing shade ranges that have every level of depth as well as every undertone within each of those levels of depth. I also recently tried a custom mixed foundation from Tinge Cosmetics, so that may be of interest to you. I hope you enjoyed this video and you thought it was not too shabby. If you did, subscribe so I can see your face again. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!